Just they won't let me. So uh, yeah. and, uh, also fun fact, when they knocked down the old building, I was like, hey, those buildings have blinds. Can I have blinds? And they're like, um, no. I was like, can we just use those blinds? And they said, okay. So uh, we're like, okay, that's the plan. We're gonna save those blinds, we're gonna cut them to fit, and we're gonna install them in the science building. And that's not what happened. Um, at some point, the building got knocked down, and I said, did, did you get the blinds? And they said, no, why would we wanna do that? <sighs> Memory when you talked about this. Yeah, oh well. So uh, yeah, and one of these days I'm just gonna be like, you know what, I don't care, I'm gonna put something up there. I'm gonna build something in the not just put tinfoil Yeah, not even supposed to do that anymore. Tinfoil has. Yeah, but anyway. I think we should make That tinfoil, that tinfoil has been up there for like 10 years. Uh, 15 years. Put a car shade. Yeah. Well, we all cut it in half. I have no yeah. <laughs> That's actually not a bad idea. I'll probably come up with something like that. But anyway, okay, so I'd have to talk about what doesn't work. Um, so, vectors. Vectors are things, variables that have a a direction and a magnitude. Okay. A direction and a magnitude. So previously we've been talking about velocity, and we say we have positive velocity or negative velocity, or positive velocity or negative velocity, or negative displacement or positive displacement. So when a variable also needs a direction, it's a vector. Okay. When you look at your speedometer, the speed it gives you is not a vector, it's a scalar. If you want to turn a scalar into a vector, you also need a direction. So you look at your speedometer and it says 65 miles per hour, that's a scalar. If you also have a compass and it says 65 miles per hour due east, that's a vector. Make sense? So, like ships and stuff, they have vector measurements. Yes, you got to move with vectors. So um, a vector can, it basically has a direction and a magnitude, question. So does scalar just have a magnitude? <laughs> yep, scalar just has a magnitude, exactly. Did you guys, have you guys learned uh, polar coordinates in math yet? Okay. So a polar coordinate, if you haven't learned it, you will soon. Uh, a polar coordinate is something that is given by its magnitude and its angle to the origin. Okay. So you will learn vectors, they call it polar coordinates. It's usually graphed on a circle instead of a Cartesian rectangle. Uh, so a vector has both magnitude and direction. So magnitude, how long the arrow is, direction, the angle from the origin. Make sense? Now, how you convert between uh, how you convert between Cartesian coordinates, or the x and y, you have x and y. How you convert between those and polar coordinates is with trig functions, which we're going to talk about. Now, since a vector only has magnitude and direction, you can translate it all over the page without changing the vector. Okay? So this vector can be translated anywhere on the page. It doesn't change the vector because it doesn't change its magnitude or its direction. If you rotate a vector, that changes it. If you lengthen or shorten a vector, that changes it. But moving it around the page does not change it. Cool. Now the reason we're actually going to be using vectors is because eventually we're going to transition from one dimensional motion, up, down, left, and right, to two dimensional motion, firing at angles. That's where we're going. So you've all done one dimensional vector addition. What have you done one dimensional vector addition? Where you add, add vectors together. You did it in elementary school. You did it in like second or third grade. Remember number lines? Okay. Yeah, remember number lines where you had a line and it had arrows and then there was a zero right here and you had tick marks you're like four and then you had another one and it was like negative four. So you were like, if this arrow is added to this arrow, what's the result? And you said zero because that was one dimensional vector addition. They were doing one dimensional vector addition way back in second grade. So if this vector is added to this vector, the result is this vector. And how do you get that? This is called the graphical method of vector addition. You add vectors head to toe, from the head of the first vector to the toe of the second vector. You add vectors head to toe. So you take this vector and you move it up here, 
And what you're left with is a resultant that starts, so we're gonna translate this vector up here, and what we're left with is a vector that starts here and ends here. Wow. There. Okay, so that's vector addition. You just take the first vector and you add it to the second vector. Make sense so far? All right. So here's another one. What would happen if you added this vector to that vector? The result would be that vector. So you just take this vector, translate it over. You translate this vector over and you translate it like that. Then the resultant is where you started to where you ended, which is this vector right here. Which by coincidence just happens to be green because blue plus yellow equals green. Make sense? Okay, give me a thumbs up if this makes sense to you. And we're moving on. Two-dimensional vectors, this is why we're here. We're here for two-dimensional vectors. Two-dimensional vectors are vectors that do not follow the x and y directions. They're not all x or all y, they follow uh, both of them. So you can still add them quantitative or qualitatively head to tail. So if you wanted to add that vector to that vector, that's the resultant vector. I'll show you again. So imagine you've got two vectors, that vector and that vector, and you just take them and you move them head to tail, and the resultant vector starts where you started and ends where you ended. Oh, Make sense? shoot. Now, there is a, there is a um, temptation a, to, to go head to head or tail to tail. Don't do that. Take vectors, go head to tail. Now, does it matter what order you use? So the big vector is the first vector and the little vector is the second vector. Would it matter if you went little vector to big vector? Yes. No, it wouldn't. Because addition is com commute commutative? commutative. Okay. So it doesn't matter. So 7 plus 5 is the same as 5 plus 7. Similarly, when you add vectors, it doesn't matter what order you add them. In fact, if you kind of look, imagine this vector translated up here. It's going to give you another green vector. It's just going to be somewhere else on the page. Does it matter that it's somewhere else on the page? No. Because, again, vectors only have two values. They have magnitude and direction. Where they are located doesn't matter. Does this idea make sense? All right. Gesundheit. Give me a thumbs up if you're with me so far. Okay. Wave your hand around if you have a question. All right. And those look, well, viewing at home, like and subscribe, get the bell on. So here's two vectors. So now we're, they're both pointing in a negative y direction. So both vectors have a negative y uh, component. And this vector has a x component that is positive. This vector has an x component that is negative. And it turns out that the y's add up and the negatives cancel out. We'll see that again. So here you've got, uh, there we go. There's a vector pointing in negative y, there's a vector pointing in negative y. Put them head to tail, and the resultant vector is that. You ready to practice on your own? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, let's do this. Okay. So here is, oops, uh, there we go. Hey, so if you wouldn't mind, uh, take those two vectors as best you can, sketch them, and see if you can figure out where the resultant vector is gonna go. And when you're done, show your neighbor and, uh, and see if your art agrees with her art. Um, see if its art of, agrees with their art. I think he's talking about me being a guy. your crumbs, don't eat the ants. <laughs> okay, so um, you got one vector, 
pointing into positive x, a or a little bit positive x, a lot positive y. One vector pointing into negative y and a little bit negative x. So you would hope that they would cancel out a little bit. So if you put them together, that vector plus that vector gets you that vector. Sweet. Okay. Does that look kind of like what your result vector is? No. Once again, does it matter the order? No. No. You could have done this one plus this one, so you could have like put this one right here, and it still would have drawn the same vector. You could have put like, that one over here, it's right here, it still would have drawn the same vector. Okay. How about one more? So now we got two vectors pointing in the very y. One's got a positive x, one's got a negative x. What's the result I'm going to look like? One is very, very big Y, one is a little bit positive X, the other one is very positive Y, the other one is a little bit negative X. Chatter, you ready to move on? Oh yeah. You get something that looks kind of like yeah. that plus that gives you mostly vertical-ish. Yes. Cool. Now give me a thumbs up. If you're with me. Okay. If you have questions, wave your hand around in the air. No, Mr. Byer, stop. Listen. Okay. Good question. Why does the vector Um, head to toe. Yeah, imagine, yeah, because you're going to go head to toe. So if this one is positive and this is positive, they're, you're going to have some positive y and positive y added together. If this one has some negative component, this one has some negative component of x, this one has some positive component of x, they're going to kind of cancel each other out. And that's the next thing we're going. Now, we're going to, now that we've done graphical addition, we're going to break these things into their components, which are their x component and their y component, and add those together. And that's where, that's where the real value is. This is called qualitative addition. Do you know what qualitative means? No. Uh, I it's don't. high quality. Okay, so a qualitative description would be like, Rome is tall. Oh, shoot. Yeah, okay. Daryl is smart. Okay. Oh, those, those are things that don't have numbers attached to them. Uh, but if you want to make something quantitative, quantitative values tend to be more precise and more useful. Be like Trump is dumb. Uh, that's like, well, okay, we know he's dumb, but how dumb? And you're like, Trump has an IQ of Negative pi. Negative no, pi. One. Um, something. Yeah, he has negative IQ. Yeah, he's, he's bigly dumb. Bigly um, dumb. So anyway, so now you don't need to write this down, but it's actually kind of cool. Um, vector addition is not limited to only two vectors. You can put a whole bunch of vectors in. So take a look. This is actually kind of fun. And if you add that vector to that vector, to that vector, to that vector, Ooh. can you guess the resulting vector yeah. just by looking at it? Hmm. Well, look at this. Does it make sense that that vector moved over here yeah. is going to produce a vector that looks like that? Yeah. So this vector plus this vector would equal this vector. So this vector put here would create a vector here, which would cancel this one out. And the result is that vector. Yo. So that vector Quick plus math. that vector. And it doesn't matter what order you go, plus this vector gets you a vector that looks just like that one. Because if you take this vector and move it head to toe over here, the resulting vector is going to be a diagonal line right here. That's going to cancel out this vector, leaving this one left. Isn't that fun? That's cool. Yeah. That should be. All right. So now we're going to resolve vectors into their components. By resolving vectors into their components, we uh, we find the x value. Did you not need to test? Uh, I didn't have an count, so you just sent me that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so by resolving vectors into their components, we find their xness and their yness. 
We find the vectors x component and their y component. And we do that, of course, with uh, triangle math. Some people call triangle math trigonometry. It's triangle measurement, but uh, we're going to call it trigonometry. So there's a vector, very simple vector. It has x component, it has y component, and it has an angle. So what resolving vectors into their components does is it tells us this is how much x-ness this vector has, this is how much y-ness this vector has. Now, how might we go about figuring out how much x-ness this vector has? Well, what we have is a magnitude and an angle. We have a magnitude and an angle. So to find out the x-ness of a vector, we use triangle math. We want to know what this leg is. So the magnitude is the hypotenuse. And we use the hypotenuse and the angle to find the leg. Remember our uh, triangle math? So if this is hypotenuse, which it is, and this is opposite, sinister, which it is, and this is adjacent, or adjective, which it is, then if you wanted to figure out x, you'd be like, all right. Um, remember trigonometry, angle measurement? It would be tangent. Equal tangent is adjacent over hypotenuse, which you don't have. All we have is magnitude and angle. It's, it's cosine, yeah. So remember that cosine, of an angle. Correct. So, is that blue? Yeah, okay. So, cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Yeah. So, you can basically say um, cosine angle equals adjacent leg, which is, in this case, x. So equals x over the magnitude m. Make sense? And, cosine theta. and if you want to get m by itself, it's just x equals m cosine theta. Chris? So in this situation, we only have the magnitude. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to find the x, um, the x axis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You're trying to find how much of that vector is xness, the xness of that vector. So you're, by resolving things with their components, you're saying, all right, this vector has this value in x, and then it has this value in y. This is how you convert from what you're going to learn as polar coordinates to what you're going to learn as Cartesian coordinates. Okay. Does this idea make sense so far? We're going to do this in simulations, too. We're going to practice it today, practice it tomorrow, do it in simulations later on this week. So if uh, if the x of the vector is m cosine theta, what do you think the y is? The y is inverse cosine? So the y, put my green, put my green. So that's funny, that was a piece of that reference. If the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is Therefore, the y over the magnitude, so if the sine of the angle is y over the magnitude, wouldn't it make sense that y is magnitude sine theta? Can you follow that math from here to here? So if you want the y-ness of a, a vector, then it's m sine theta. You want to know the y-ness of the oh, vector is m sine theta. Okay. It's the same length as, as the y. It is the y-ness of the vector. So it is, if you broke this vector into components, it's going to be how much y it has. It's kind of like this. If you had a helicopter, you could go from Phoenix, Arizona to uh, Denver, Colorado. Or you could go from Phoenix, Arizona to Houston, then up to Denver. You're going to get to the same place. I don't know if that's ge geographically correct, but I'm just guessing here. But does that make sense? So, all right, so this is what happens. The quarterback takes the ball, and he runs 10 yards to the right. Then he throws 10 yards forward, 
and the, the receiver had just ran a diagonal post pattern and caught the ball. They both ended at the same place. He ran an arrow route. Yeah, an arrow route. Do it like a vector. Okay, coach. I got it. Okay. 38. I need you to go six meters at 24 degrees. Number 85. I need you to go eight meters at 10 degrees. What do I do? You go long. <laughs> you go long. You're teaching us all the secrets of Nick Saban Dobbins. Yeah. Is it's all geometry. Okay. Does this, does this idea make sense? So why is this important? It's important because you can take the components and then you can add them, add the x component to the x component of one vector to another vector. Add the y component of one vector to the y component of another vector. Why do you have to do this? Because the single most important concept in all of two-dimensional motion is that motion in the x and motion in the y are what of each other? Independent. They are independent of each other. So if I throw this ball at Corey, gravity acts in what direction? In the y direction. And if he throws it back at me, does gravity say, oh, I didn't realize you were moving the x. Continue on. I won't touch you. No. As far as gravity is concerned, all the ball is doing is this. That's what gravity is thinking is happening. But I know that I also gave it some x velocity. Okay? So x motion and y motion are independent of each other. Does that make sense? So when we have vectors, now I threw it, I did not throw it exactly horizontally because I knew it wasn't going to make it, it would just hit Adam in the face. So I had to throw it with an upward trajectory too. That's what we're going, we're basically talking about projectiles. How I threw it at a diagonal direction, and there was motion in the x direction and motion in the y direction. Questions? Are you ready to practice with some vectors? This is probably going to take us to the end of the class. Yeah. All right, you're going to blow away your, your pre-calculus teacher when you get to, to polar coordinates. You'll be like, I don't even know how to do this. We did this in physics. And you'll be like, OK, continue on. You may play your Fortnite. Fortnite's a different way to do it. Oh, probably not. What is with this? And then they'll bring up the metric system. Or uh, <laughs> it'll, be like, it'll be like 32 feet per second. <laughs> okay, um, so break these vectors into components. You got component one or vector one that has a magnitude of 10 degrees and a angle of sorry magnitude of 10 units and an angle of 15 degrees. Vector two has a magnitude of six units 